Next, let's talk about how to remove 3-2 pull-down. But before we remove 3-2 pull-down, we should ask, why? Well, honestly, if all you're doing is a straight video edit, you probably don't need to remove the pull-down. You can go ahead and treat pull-down footage like normal interlaced video footage. However, if you are doing anything with the footage, like wanting to rotoscope it, mask it, render something on top of it like animated text, then you do probably want to remove the pull-down, and here's why. Interlaced NTSC video has a field rate of 59.94 fields per second. That's a lot of individual images every second that you do have to render, track, rotoscope, mask, etc. However, footage with 3-2 pull-down really only has a unique frame every 23.976 frames per second. That's a lot fewer frames per second to have to process and deal with. There's two other issues besides just labor. One is rendering time. If you go ahead and remove pull-down and deal with footage at that native rate, your renders can take only 40% as long compared to having to deal with it as normal video footage. Now, having to render, mask, or otherwise process only 40% as many frames should be reason enough to remove pull-down, but I do want to hammer home how important the motion part of the equation is as well. Here I built a comp where I took a piece of footage with pull-down, but I'm treating it like normal video footage, separating its fields. I've put it into a composition that's running at the normal video frame rate, 29.97 frames a second. I've added on top of my footage a sensor that's following the head of this person as he moves through the air. Let's go ahead and step through the individual frames of this footage by hitting page down. Now my sensor is tracking this guy's head, but as you see there are some frames where the sensor moves and the action doesn't. That's because the pull-down footage has a lower underlying frame rate than normal video does. This becomes even more pronounced if I stepped through at the field rate. If I was to field render this footage, I'd be moving through it at 59.94 fields a second. And now you're really going to see a difference in motion. As I page down, there's many fields where the sensor moves, but the footage does not. So if you're matching animation on top of footage with pull-down, you really do want to remove the pull-down and then animate your additional elements at the same speed so all the motion matches up. When we remove pull-down, we're actually doing two things. We're separating the fields in the footage, and then we're determining the phase of the pull-down, the 3-2 order. As it turns out, After Effects is pretty good at guessing both of these things. Select your clip in the project window, type Command F on Mac or Control F on Windows to open the Interpret Footage dialog, and click on Guess 3-2 Pull-Down. After Effects will take a shot at separating the fields and determining the phase. Now a very important thing here is After Effects now says the effective frame rate is 23.976 frames per second. We've gone from interlaced 2997 footage down to unique frames at 23.976 frames per second rate. This is exactly what we wanted to do. Now, After Effects usually guesses pretty well, but you do want to always check to make sure it got it right. Click OK, hold down Option on Mac or Alt on Windows, and double click your footage to open it in the footage window. This shows the footage after interpret footage settings have been applied. Hit page down, step through the footage, and so far, it looks good. I'm seeing a unique frame every time I hit page down, and I'm not seeing any telltale interlacing signs. That's great. After Effects guessed correctly. However, there are times when After Effects will guess wrong. For example, if your footage has a fade up at the start. And let's see that in action. So I'm going to select this clip that has a fade up from black, do Command or Control F, and say Guess 3-2 Pull Down. Well, After Effects did give me an answer. It said Upper Field first, and it gave me a phase and it does say the effective frame rate is 23,976. Okay, but well, what does that footage really look like? Option or Alt double click. Let's step through it. Here's our fade up. As we start to come up, we've got some problems here. For one thing, I still see interlacing. If you still see these telltale interlaced comb teeth, After Effects did not guess right, and you will need to remove the pull down manually yourself. To manually remove pull-down, first we need to separate the fields. And to separate fields, we need to know the field order of the footage. There's only two choices, upper or lower field. And it so happens that we can make a pretty intelligent guess about what the field order is based on the footage itself. If it's standard definition DV, either NTSC or PAL, it's always going to be lower field first. If it's interlaced HD, high definition footage, it's always going to be upper field first. If it's PAL D1 footage, it's also always going to be upper field first. 
If it's NTSC D1 footage, well, it can be either upper or lower field first. You'll have to test both and see which one it really is. Now we have done an entirely separate module on fields and interlacing, and if you want to really get into the subject, we suggest you view that as well, but it's just as easy to poke around inside After Effects and figure out by yourself which one's right. So go ahead and select your clip in the footage window, type Command F on Mac, Control F on Windows to open the interpret footage, and turn off Remove Pull Down for now. We're going to focus on separating fields. We have two choices, upper or lower. Let's go ahead and try upper first. Click OK. And again, I'm going to Option or Alt double click to make sure that I'm open in my footage window. This looks at the footage after After Effects is processed it. And I'm going to keep typing page down, which moves me forward one frame at a time and see what the video looks like. So page down, okay, move forward a big jump. Page down, hmm, even though I'm going forward a frame, the action moved backwards. Page down, action moves forward. Page down, even though I'm paging down continuously, I'm not getting real smooth movement, and I'm getting occasional jumps backwards. If you're stepping in one direction through your footage, and your motion is going in a jerky pattern, forwards and backwards, then you've guessed the wrong field order. No problem. Go back, open interpret footage again, and just try the other field order, lower field first. Bring my footage window forward again, and let's try moving through these frames. Stepping forward, step, 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 step. Yes, it looks like all my movement is going in the same direction now, and I'm starting to see that three field, two field pattern of three, two pull down. Great. Now that we've got the field separated, we can go about guessing the correct phase of the pull down so we can remove that as well. Go back, select the clip again, open interpret footage, and let's start trying different pull down phases. We want to focus on these first five up here. Again, the W and S refer to the hold and split pattern that was in the interlaced footage. So let's just pick the first one. You notice again, effective frame rates dropped to 23,976. That is our goal, to get this back to the original slower frame rate. Let's click OK, bring the footage window forward again, and then let's start hitting page down and stepping through the frames. As soon as we see an interlaced frame, we know we've guessed the wrong phase. The whole point of removing pull down is getting rid of any interlaced frames and getting back to the original whole frames. So let's go back to interpret footage try the next phase. Okay, footage window forward. I can already see it's wrong because I see an interlaced frame. I see that comb teeth effect. Okay, let's try another one. Tedious, but this is what you have to do sometimes. Okay, promising. Step forward, forward. Ah, there's interlacing again. You have to look at at least four or five frames to really tell if you've got the pull down removed. Go back to interpret footage. Try one more phase. Click OK. Initially promising, stepping, stepping, step, step, step. Ah, here we go. At long last, no interlacing artifacts and a unique frame every time I page forward through the footage, and there's no strange skips, no strange motion. So I have successfully guessed the right field order and successfully removed the pull down. Now, if you've tried all five phases and you're still seeing some interlacing artifacts in the footage, there's a few other possibilities as to what you might be seeing. The most common example is that the phase is changing throughout the clip. If there are edits during the course of the clip, there's a chance that the phase is also changing at every single edit. So whenever you do have a piece of footage and you've removed pull down, it's best to check the footage at several points through it just to make sure you've removed pull down throughout the whole thing. If you do have footage with edit points in it, you've got a couple different choices here. One, go back and slice the footage into individual clips from cut to cut. Then remove the pull down from each individual cut inside the footage. The second choice is that there is a plugin to make your life easier. Revision effects, pull down. And what it allows you to do is actually keyframe the phase so you can change the phase every single cut in your video. It's another solution. Once you've removed your pull down from your footage, you can treat it like any other clip. If you want to take full advantage of pull down and its lower frame rate, which again is going to save us a lot of time when it comes to masking, rotoscoping, and rendering, go ahead and make a comp that is the same frame rate as your footage. Let's go ahead and take one of these clips where we've removed the pull down, and the bottom of the project window is a Create New Composition button. If you drag your footage to that button, After Effects will create a comp for you that has the same frame rate and same duration as your footage. Very, very handy to make sure that frame rate gets across. Click OK. Life is good.
Now there are occasions where you want to work at an original film frame rate of 24 frames a second, not the pulled down video approximation of 23.976 frames a second. If you do that, you need to change two things, not just your composition's frame rate, but also the frame rate of your footage. Let's go back to your footage, open interpret footage, and you need to conform the frame rate of the original footage to 30, not to 24, because the act of removing pull down is going to lower the effective frame rate down to 24 frames a second. This works fine if all you have are video clips. If there's audio attached to these clips, After Effects will not change the speed of the audio as well. And a little bit later on, we'll show you how to deal with audio issues related to pull down. But for now, click OK and let's go forward. Now there is one bug in After Effects that's been there for a long time that deals with how it displays pull down footage. Even though you've removed pull down, pull down will still rear its ugly head occasionally as you step through the footage. You see we have some half resolution interlacing artifacts in here. Don't freak out. There's nothing wrong with your footage. You've removed pull down correctly. This is just an artifact in After Effects. So if you can, work at full resolution or just try to ignore these problems.